What's up guys and welcome back to another exciting video. I know a lot of people that have small businesses or just started running their own business but don't know how to film themselves in order to promote what they are doing. Hiring me can be very expensive. So I thought I would make a video on how to film yourself with not much cost using an iPhone to get the best results out of your video. With that said, I have 10 steps prepared for you to follow easily. Let's get into it. So step number one is to set up your camera settings. Go to settings, camera, record video and choose 4K 24 frames per second. 4K has more detail than 1080p and 24 frames per second gives us that natural filmic look. If you don't have that option, choose 1080p 30 frames per second, that's fine too. If you want to get more out of your iPhone camera, I highly recommend you purchase the Filmic Pro app, which gives you full manual control over your camera settings and will turn your iPhone into a professional video camera. If you want to check that out, I have a tutorial on that, which I will link up here. Step number two is to check your iPhone storage space. Delete all of your cat pictures to free up enough space. Step number three is to turn off your notification. Turn off your notifications by swiping down and turning on night mode. That way you won't get any interruptions while filming. Step number four is to clean your lens. Simply clean that filthy smug off of your lens by using a lens wipe. Step number five is to use a tripod. If you're filming yourself, it makes sense to invest in a tripod. The tripod allows you to adjust the height and be more flexible when choosing your framing. I went with the Coleman Alpha tripod because it's an alpha tripod, which is super cheap and costs only 30 bucks. Make sure to additionally get the compatible tripod mount for your iPhone. The Ulanzi adapter for only 15 bucks is a great solution. If for some reason you can't or don't want to use a tripod, get creative. Stack books together or ask someone to be your human tripod. Anything that can keep the camera in place. Step number six is to live monitor yourself. Use the front facing camera, which usually has less quality, but will allow you to live monitor yourself. The main reason why you need to see yourself is to mainly get the framing right, but also check if you're still recording. This is probably the easiest, most cost effective way since you don't need to buy an external monitor. You will get decent quality out of your front facing camera, but if you want to get the best image quality, then using the camera on the back of your iPhone would be a better idea. The downside to it is that you can't see what you're recording. And if you want to frame yourself, you could do it through trial and error but it can get very frustrating. Hello, my name is Bennett. Um, I'm a filmmaker and I would like to apply for a job. It does work, but there are easier methods, which will lead us to our next step, which is to frame yourself. In order to frame yourself, the best solution would be to connect your iPhone to an external monitor, but those don't come cheap. A more cheaper solution would be to use a placeholder like my Obito stand. Simply place it where you would have yourself standing. You could also use a different object. The goal is to set a reference point. That way you can adjust the framing, set the focus and exposure to make the image look good. Once everything is set, hit the record button, move the placeholder away and position yourself where the placeholder stood. As you might have realized by now is that you can't see what you're recording. I don't know what I'm recording, my friend. So for example, if the camera accidentally stopped recording because you have no storage space, you wouldn't know until you checked it for yourself. If you're recording at home, I recommend using the Lightning Digital AV adapter for 50 bucks to connect it to your computer, laptop, or TV. These days, there are plenty of TVs with HDMI inputs that you can buy for an affordable price. Really great solution to mirror exactly what you're seeing on your iPhone. Now, when filming yourself, the rule of thirds is a good starting point to get a more appealing and better balanced image. The rule of thirds divides your image equally into nine parts. You want to position yourself at the points where they meet. Make sure to have grid lines checked to have them appear in your frame. A lot of beginners place themselves in the dead center. Although that composition can be powerful, using it too much can get very boring. In general, videos should be shot and viewed horizontally. This way you have a widescreen format. Never 
set up your iPhone vertically while recording unless your video is specifically for Snapchat or Instagram. Step number eight is to light your video. If you don't have the money to buy video lights, the best way is to use natural light that is coming from the sun. You want to pay attention to the time of day because depending on how high the sun is, the light can get really harsh, which will cast strong shadows. You generally want to go for a softer lighting. If you're filming outside, pick an overcast day or avoid midday sun. If you're at home, place yourself close to the window. Over time, it's definitely worth investing in a good light. For my videos, I use the Aperture 120D combined with the window light. There are certainly cases where you will need additional light. If you're on a budget, a great solution is to buy a small newer LED light for 30 bucks and use it with a $10 lantern from Ikea. Place it above or close enough to illuminate your face. A great hack that produces a really soft light. Well, Bennett, I don't want to set up an extra light. Why can't I just increase the ISO? You hear that plane? It's a beautiful day outside, huh? Piece of sh iPhones don't do well in low light situations because of their tiny sensor. So if there's absolutely no way to add additional light into your scene, the last option would be to increase your exposure in your camera. You can do that by tap holding on the screen. A box will appear, then tap hold somewhere around the box and slide either up or downwards to adjust your exposure. Now you can also lock your exposure and focus by tap holding with your finger on the screen until it says AE lock. You absolutely want to do that before you start recording. This way you will avoid exposure and focus change during recording. Step number nine is to use a microphone. Ah, this one. If you don't have the money to invest in a decent mic, make sure to place yourself close to where your iPhone is. Buying a microphone is a great investment if you plan to film a lot of videos. I like using the Rode VideoMic Mi L, which you can get for 50 bucks. That produces great audio. If you need to move around a lot, you could invest in the Rode Wireless Go for 200 bucks with an Apple Lightning II 3.5 millimeter jack adapter for 10 bucks. This is absolutely my favorite because of its simple setup and good audio quality. And I can move around wherever I want and the audio quality is still great. Step number 10, once you've filmed your video, plug your iPhone into your computer and import your footage into your editing software. A great and free software is iMovie, which I used to work with before I upgrade to Final Cut Pro X. If you never have edited a video before, then I suggest you start right now. iMovie is really easy to use and there are many tutorials online if you want to get started. That was it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and let let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. Subscribe to support me. I'm working hard to produce more awesome content for you guys. We are soon reaching 2000 subscribers, which is really crazy, man. So thanks a lot for your support. And remember, the best camera is the one you have in your pocket.